Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the new episode of the All Jazz Podcast. Tonight, or today, more it's morning, my, my, my friend. My friend is here. My great friend from the Amsterdam Magic Show, which we're going to talk about later. Arthur Gerard, Gerard, how do you say it? Well, Gerard. As, uh, y- 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 any, like, say any, it how you, the Dutch people say it. They say Arthur Gerard. 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 Yes, very good. But I would say Gerard. Gerard. Arthur Gerard. Yes, and welcome, welcome, Arthur. Welcome. Thanks. It's fun being here. This and is this is a, a new project I have been doing. Yes. Episode but, six so far. But it's also fun to see you, like because we meet each other only at the um, Amsterdam Magic Show, yes. and then sometimes we have social stuff around that, like a meeting with all the crazy magicians. Yeah, the let me call it team building. Huh? Yeah. Yes. And now we're. Uh, we're, we're, we're in a different setting, and that's fun. Mm. <laughs> so thanks for inviting me. Welcome. You know, one of the main reasons was because you're a great magician on stage. Your presence <laughs> is, uh, you know, we're going to talk a little bit more about the magic in the Patreon episode, so mm-hmm. check out that. But uh, right now, you know, one of the biggest interests, because I'm completely fascinated by things I don't understand or know. That's why I became a magician. Uh, probably you as well. Mm-hmm. But your other ability, which is way more not mental, like you do in your acts on stage, it's way more physical. Well, and it's very mental as well. Also, they yes. say, also they say it's very mental. So I wanted to talk to you about all the, you want to introduce, because uh, cause not com- let's not completely go to the extreme version of yourself right now. <laughs> let's start from the beginning. Uh, like you're a very sporty guy. At least I know you've been doing the, the um, what's this even called when you do? The trial on. Fi- Oh, no, the no, body, no, the, the, spit, the, the fitness yes, for the people to get I teach it. sports classes for okay. people, like called Body Pump. It's from uh, Les Mills. That's a, uh, um, they are from New Zealand. They make fitness classes yeah. for, for people around the world. And I already teach that for, I think, uh, it's more than well, well, five, six, seven years, maybe. Wow. So, yeah, because yeah, ever since I've known you, five years ago, we started the Amsterdam Magic Show, and you've yep. been doing that as well. But, That's but you know, Fritz always also say that you're an actor by night, by day and magician uh, by, by night. night. What does that mean? I never asked. Yeah, I studied musical theater oh. in the beginning. Oh, in the beginning when I was when I just finished school, and I um, I wor- I, I had some work in in that after uh, f- uh, graduating, but then slowly um, the the the. Um, the work environment changed. There were there was less work. There was less work that was suitable for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't suit jobs, and uh, so there there came a period where I had less work in, mm-hmm. in there. But I always kept my um, fitness going, and al- always kept my interest for teaching classes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, after I finished my final big production. Um, which was was called War Horse, where I played a uh-huh. horse. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, you reference that in your act. Yes. You do such a. Go- you want to do the ho- the voice of the. <laughs> wow! They were gonna applause there. I love because you know, like this brings me back. To, there's not. There's no oh, cl- applause here. Wait, wait. No, you need oh, to put yo, this wait. one on. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Let's keep it on. Let's keep yes. it on. Perfect. Uh, because this is what this is what happens when it's a one man operation. So you don't have. <laughs> But you know what? I wanted to just take a segue a little bit when you mentioned that the, the voice. Uh, this really connects with me a little bit because one of my first tickets uh, to a concert show that I was able to go was I was 12 years old. Yeah, I was actually 11, almost 12. And I won the tickets on a national Slovenia radio show because I called secretly in my room. My parents didn't know and they wanted people to imitate the voices. Mm. And I did like a bunch of like a Tarzan a screeching door. Of, I don't know. I was a <laughs> bunch of and I and I managed to do the best of them all. They gave me the ticket, but they oh. asked me, like, how old are you? So I was like, mm, 12. So I had to go with my dad. So but that's just a little segue on your voice. That was amazing, amazing. Uh, I couldn't <laughs> do that uh, horse voice. But then after Did you th- practice that for the show? Like we really had, intense? Yeah, we had to. And what was even more amazing, I was, there were two, I was with two, actually they became, well, one of them, I w- both, I could consider them as friends before, but afterwards we got closer friends uh, and, and because you work together. Like you're with three people, you're, you're uh, manipulating the puppet, the uh-huh, horse. Uh-huh. Lots of people always think of a carnival suit as a horse, but it was really like a state of the art, um, made of wood and cloth and it really looked real like nice. if, if we would enter the room with it uh, people would be really fascinated and they were like 
Like it felt like a real horse wow, was standing wow. there. Um, but with it, can people see that somewhere online? If they just Google yes, War Horse, they can see it. Okay, w- Google War Horse and you'll see War that. Horse like theater show because yes. there is also a movie of Steven Spielberg. Mm-hmm. Um, but like I was doing the head, um, and then the, my two friends were doing the. They call it the heart that pop, that and the and the hind. So that's the mm-hmm. front legs mm-hmm. and the back legs. And but but everyone has an, an additional task to that. Mm-hmm. Um, but you can imagine that if we would stand on stage and we would talk to each other, it would be very not not believable because a horse is not talking with his brain to his legs to his feet. Because exactly. we had to do everything by um, mind, but also with like if we would start to move, we would go like, and then you would like you would hear the breath. So uh. it, I, they always that there were people from the UK who originally made the show. They learned us the show, mm-hmm. the creators and. Um, so my two friends, Frank and Gijs, they, uh, were, we were with one team and we always stayed in that team. So okay. you, nev- we, you never really swapped, only if someone would break a leg or you yeah. to. But usually you were with your team. And um, also the making the sound, uh, a horse lung is three times the size of a human lung. Mm. So if the, ho- the sound that I made right now mm-hmm. is super short compared to a horse sound. Yeah. So what we would usually do is one would start then the second one would take over, oh, so the like last one would finish, yes. Oh. So you had like the full um, range of the lungs. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. That's really And you creative. really had to, I always found that the show was very hard because you, um, uh, I think in the first 20 minutes, the, the, it's only like a small puppet, like small horse, and then mm-hmm. it, 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 it grows up. Uh, uh. grows up, And then suddenly there's a very spectacular change where the small horse becomes the big horse. And from that moment on, you're like nonstop on stage. How so long? How long for that? Uh, during the whole show. So that's yeah, like uh, an hour, t- half, two. Like the first 20 minutes, you're on stage without any break. And I was holding the head in the, in the air oh. with one hand. And the head yeah. weighs like five kilos. And there's you you can't re- you you and then so wait a minute you had to be already completely in shape before you start so yes. so that really helped that you're already in fitness and, yeah. and, and yeah. into the training yeah and then you had to uh, and then for the first twenty minutes you were on and then you went off through the audience into the theater you were somewhere backstage um, but but like you would walk through the audience out of the doors where they just entered the the, the, the show mm-hmm. and then you would have like a like I, it always felt like we were Max Verstappen. We we had a pit stop. They put us on chairs. They gave us a bud on. Like everyone had their own yeah, everything towels, timed. and we were like already soaking wet. And then you had to go on. And then the in the intermission, you got like a new T shirt. And um, yeah, it was wow. lots of fun. Wow. And I always felt it was very even because it was very heavy, but it was also very meditative. You were always mm-hmm. like yet always because the only thing you, you were had to be like in your place not to think about anything I just no do the it's also last like so one week ago last tuesday we had the amsterdam magic show and there was some stuff going on in my private life that i was uh that made me a little bit um how do you say like anxious um, or not anxious but like lots of things to think about mm-hmm. like the whole time my mind was going like okay, okay. On and, on and, on. Yeah. and then suddenly you're doing this show and because we're in this like let's call it the black box mm-hmm. there is like you cl- like there's no connection with the outside world. Mm-hmm. The only thing that's happening right now at, at that moment is happening at that stage. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's what I really like about theater or magic. Or, or sport, like extreme sports. Like uh, you, you probably get like really into, you have to focus or be yeah. in the moment. Yeah, but with, with theater is even more fun because you re- for one moment you decide, well, people, we're going to pretend, like with magic itself, we're going to pretend mm-hmm. that I have magical powers. You mm-hmm. know that I don't have. Exactly. Because magical powers in the world, well, don't really exist. Not that we can discover yet <laughs> no. so far. <laughs> but even though we know that, we make this agreement that we stand on stage and we're going to do something and you're going to believe in it or yeah. you're going to make it. It's kind it of like a transcending, tra- transcending the, the natural and the supernatural world. It's like movies yeah. and... Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's really, and that's what I, and that's what I experience. Normally, when you when you perform, you're more busy with thinking, and and then with that show, you really there was no moment where you could think of doing the groceries or <laughs> thinking about your personal yeah. problems. You were just yeah. really like they call that poor man's theater. So mm-hmm. a, a house was made with just one door on stage. So you really had to use your imagination to. Um, 
to fill yeah. in the blanks of uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah and i think that yeah. really works as an like as because as an audience you really need to work harder than when you go to like in a west end broadway musical yeah, where everything yeah. is set up um but the, and then standing on stage you i really had the feeling that i was in this farm or mm -hmm. I, i was in this in this field or in the war mm -hmm. while yeah you were you were just standing in the in Carré in the amsterdam yeah, yeah so i really uh love that and i and i actually wanted to they had a west end show performing there for like um years mm -hmm. and then i with guys we auditioned for the west end show and it was a little it was a little odd because we Well, we we thought they were interested in seeing us, and at the end, they didn't hire anyone who did the show already. So huh. we had the feeling like, okay, we understand that you that you don't want to that you only want the fresh people because mm -hmm. maybe if we would enter like after doing a show for so long, maybe you're done with it faster. Yeah, but we were a little bit. Um, Yeah, disappointed probably, and, and, and yeah, I wasn't done with that. Yeah, yeah, and I also felt, and that's the thing. What I, what I do like about uh, things that I just do in life, that everything has a little, little like a little purpose, mm -hmm. so meaning. You, yeah, yeah. We, people love. Me we need meaning. I think personally. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. you do, just don't do like if I teach a stupid. Well, not the stupid sports class, but if I teach like a body pump class, yeah, there yeah, it's many teachers they're yeah. going like, okay, go down, go up, go left, go right, go yeah. in and out, breathe in, breathe out. Okay, fun. Thank you guys. See you next week. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Fun. Yeah. But how can you? I sometimes had, and that's what what's the cherry on the on the cake, like mm -hmm. the, the the big reward. If people say like, oh, the month tonight, for example, I need to teach, go back to Amsterdam and teach classes. And there are people that go like, oh, Monday evening is really my highlight of the week or yes. something that I really look forward to. Mm -hmm. Or, um, and not every class is li like that, but it's also with the magic. It's not, it's nice if you, yeah, if you can, it can, can create, if people can leave the, the room and Like and then they start thinking and that or they have memories and feelings. You know, you know this. I don't know this quote where it's from, but they say a lot of times I hear it that it's not about uh, you know them uh, how they don't remember your face or name. It's more important how you made them feel. Yeah, the experience. You know, yeah. Experience and and yeah, we just magicians we use magic as that uh, conductor or let's say connecting with the with the audience like any artist would do or not just artists and people in general look for connections like that mm -hmm. through exp expressing themselves like that but beautiful that you think of it that way you know like uh it's not not a lot of people would uh but i don't know we artists who are so sensitive or artistic people you know because i don't call myself an artist uh, when my wife is an artist for sure i'm more artistic natured you know like because When you look at my wife, what she does from nothing creates stuff, you mm -hmm. know, like well, well, that's art, you know, like we're conceptualizing. I'm I'm trying and learning from a lot of things, but I see that I love to have fun, you know, on stage. And, and, and I love magic as an art form, but a lot of times for the when it's like with the people on public, it's way more the, the intensity of the feeling of being in the moment, connecting, trying to make it special, unique for that night. Uh, and, you know, it's not about my skill and how this art form is so great. And, you know, we, this no. is the discussions that are more for the art field of magicians who really like to discuss that. And it's good that we do that because uh, we can progress. Yeah. And when I, so when I started doing magic, when I, I was 13, I think. Mm -hmm. So in two years, I will have my... Uh, 20 years anniversary. <laughs> you hear, we hear the cat in the background. We should let him in. <laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> you keep, keep, keep saying. I get, I get scratches and... Uh, oh, it's okay. <laughs> there goes the water and the laptop. <laughs> We're fine for now. <laughs> um, what was I saying? Come on in, Kitty. Come on in. <laughs> See what you did? <laughs> yes, okay. Chris. Now we'll, we'll close the door and you'll be good, right, Tommy? Yes. Quiet. Okay, that's that is also not gonna going, going to be edited out. We don't care. <laughs> there, there, there's no edits here, <laughs> and we'll clean this later. Yeah, we'll watch it now. <laughs> But what I so I'm from Maastricht, and yes. uh, originally I live in Amsterdam now for many years. But um, and there there was no there was no magic club. There were no people that that I could really talk to to like um, make magic bigger or like uh, yeah. discuss about techniques or anything. Yeah. I had to do everything from DVDs and books and buying tricks yeah and then i met fritz and fritz was um was studying in maastricht and uh, we were like going to the same magic shop and yeah. uh we w we had a nice connection and 
we both agreed that. So when I went to a magic congress, it w- I usually had the feeling they were like, oh, but you can't do a double triple back lift, mm-hmm. or you can't yeah, do a yeah. triple handed shuffle yeah, or yeah. whatever. Oh, then 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 you're stupid, and then, then you're not a magician. Then you're not a magician. Yeah. But if we would perform for the same audience, people wouldn't feel the difference. People would be maybe more entertained with me or with exactly, you exactly. who really live in the moment exactly. you're really connecting with the people exactly it's and not just, all uh, the magic is the starting foundation and then you build upon that yeah yeah to express and also i uh, thinking about um uh, had, had time is money like some some uh, something some tricks sleight of hand mm-hmm. is really amazing mm-hmm. but nowadays there are so much tricks and gimmicks who make things easier mm-hmm. um and you know that's a big conversation you know like the, i was just recently saw uh, uh, a thread i had a conversation with my friend and there was this magician i'm not going to name the name in 2013 quite a famous like creator of some stuff and and he was saying you know this is why magic cannot be an art form that everybody can you know can you cannot compare it to a guitar whereas you cannot just grab a guitar and go on stage and be a guitarist you know which is true which is true and there's a big market of ma- of magic being sold to easy to do, pack small, play big, and it, and it's 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 good that it's there because it's good for people who are hobbyists, you know. But it's not good when eighty to ninety percent of people who are uh, magicians are thinking that the trick does them no. make you a magician, you know. No, but I also think the guitar the, the guitar works the same exactly the same as magic because you can grab a guitar and you can and stand can on get, stage. Get, get a little bit of uh, yeah. yeah. That, is it fun? No. So. I have, a, for example, I just uh, recently bought a, a coin trick, mm-hmm. which, like, I'm I've never touched any coin tricks, mm-hmm. but after one hour of practicing, I could do it. No, but it's not that I stopped practicing over there. No, I keep doing it, exactly. and every day when I see it, I grab it, I stand in front of the mirror. I'm like, mm-hmm. mm, the, the the putting it away or like looks this looks awkward. It you looks make, awkward. Yeah. Let's make it better. Exactly. So, for example, I have a friend from Maastricht. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna call her name. Her name is Michelle. Like she's my friend from high school. We once. She Hi, was Michelle. My, yeah, hey. we were from from high from. We were in high school. She was my assistant, but she basically. I, I we don't see each other that often anymore, but yeah. because we are separated through distance. Mm-hmm. But she knows all the tricks. Why? Because I always showed the trick to her first, mm-hmm. and then. You have that with your family, maybe I, as well. Ex- exactly. And they're exactly. like, oh, oh yes, I can see it's it's taking yes. out of your pocket. And they also know exactly, family and friends know exactly how you actually are. Really. And if you, yes. your hand is a bit different, yeah. it's like, oh, what is that there? But you need that mm-hmm. because if you do that often, you it, it you can fade like uh, make the uh, make yeah. diamond make make it rough make yeah. a rough thing more smooth exactly. And yeah, that's yeah. maybe I, like a gimmick is. Um, is helping you a lot mm-hmm. but it's super it, the best thing is if you if if it doesn't look like you're using the you know sleight of hand is a, is also very like a broad term you know you can go very extreme sleight of hand with the coins and the, all the little technique mm-hmm. but even the box that I, we handle on stage and the box you had is a certain slight technique and, and chore- choreography to it and it's like you cannot take even magicians think oh i just need to do this and this no there's choreography to it you need to yeah. practice it you need to not just oh because the thing does the trick the special little thing yeah. It will not just that make it magical. Eh? Yeah, you, you know? really need to think about. Um, I mean, it will make it magical because the trick will do the trick. But it's like, yeah, but that's the mis- it, missing it, the point. It, yeah, but you ha- need to handle it right. When the trick does it, sometimes it's how you really need. Th- I what I also have when I when I um, watch, for example, uh, f- uh, f- once Fritz's performance, I said to Fritz, "Well, I really understand." the steps that you're making in your mind mm-hmm. but when i see it as an audience and i don't understand the magic there is one step that you're skipping which makes the trick like the, A bit the wow effect yeah. doesn't really mm. land mm-hmm. um, because you react on it differently than someone else like uh, um, because you know the secret like yeah. A, yeah. A, 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 a muggle. Yeah, <laughs> let's call them muggles. <laughs> we're not Mark. wizards here but let's call them muggles yeah, yeah. <laughs> so i think that it, it's it's fun to always step out of it and go like, hey, wait, but if I put too much attention on this thing, then people will, the attention will fall on it. Mm-hmm. You know, I, when I teach kids uh, in the European school, now starting again after Corona, and a lot of times I see there's different interests in, in, in children, like that, that some children are really into explain certain slides or the strike vanish, you know, how to, if, have you ever seen the strike vanish with the coin, you pop it with the, 
and if it's a very technical you have to practice over and over and but it's very you know some people just are more like like something like you know they like to practice this and they like to know inside that they are doing a thing really well mm-hmm. but magic sometimes is a problem when you have the ego has to be let go of when you when people cannot know you know how much skill you actually have because mm-hmm. it's supposed to look effortless you're supposed mm-hmm. to be like you've done nothing so magicians are faced with this ego problem because all the other performance like when somebody acts a certain way on stage really well a character's like oh he must have like practiced that it's everybody can appreciate and the, the the actor also like a juggler on stage will get that feeling from the audience immediately the wow just the honest of the practice that he must have gotten had to do to do this but we don't get to do that we have to keep it secret and that ego suffers with some people and it's like mm-hmm. it's either by sharing the secret or by putting magicians down who are better than them slight of hand wise but are not as good as presenters or whatever because they, you know, we should learn from each other i think as well like from mm-hmm. people who are, i see i'm trying to be more mis- more business minded nowadays in a sense because i'm very yeah i'll do it for this and but if you don't care you know about the business side you cannot make money with what you li- what you love to do you know yeah. So all that kind of stuff, yeah. So let, let me make a short short segue into your extreme activities because mm. this is something I'm fascinated about because I wanted, this is like a very, very conversation we could have probably for hours, but uh, you want to tell us first how you came from fitness to deciding to go to run a mal- marathon or how did that journey start? Um, so, a few, so first of all, going to the gym started with a teacher on the musical theater school saying, hey, you need to develop a little bit more strength because mm-hmm. you need to be able to lift up girls in the air. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's um, how I got into the fitness. And then when I was in the gym, people knew that, like the people that were working there knew that I was a, a dancer. And then at one point, point, the Zumba teacher was going on, on, on pregnancy leave. And they were like, can you take over the class. So that's how I got rolled into teaching classes. Mm-hmm. I don't teach Zumba for a long time anymore. Yeah. But um, so that's how I got into that. And then um, I think six years ago or five years ago, I saw an Ironman happening in Maastricht. That's a, a, okay. a triathlon where yeah. people swim 3.8 kilometers and they bike 180 kilometers and they run a full distance marathon. And it's all happening in one day after each other. Like, And you try to do it as fast as you can. Well, first of all, you try to get the finish line. Yeah, exactly. Because um, I, I was just about to say, like, uh, I would not even finish it. Like, And I remember those people saying to me, like, oh, I, I saw it and I was like, those people must be from... I really thought they must be from a different planet or what? Because yeah. how can you do that? It's impossible. That's it's what I'm thinking. Looking at you, yeah. well, <laughs> I mean, not exactly like that, but yeah. It, it, yeah. It's wow. For me, it always looked like like they were superhumans. And then I, um, as my work continued in teaching classes, I was interested in teaching more like one on one stuff. So I made like fitness plans for people. I did an education on that, and I learned actually that. Um, like fitness and cardio, like if you t- run today one kilometer and you do that a few times, then next week you will be able to run two kilometers mm-hmm. and then the week after that, like you can slowly, like your body is a machine and mm-hmm. slowly you can train it to make it bigger and bigger and bigger. And suddenly I thought, oh, it's actually not that impossible to to do such an achievement. Mm-hmm. And for a long time I, in my mind, I had, um, yeah, I don't know if, Maybe lots of people have that. But in my mind, there was also always like an, a negative voice. Not all the time. Mm-hmm. But sometimes I could hear someone or something saying, um, you study musical theater, but you don't have work in it anymore. Mm-hmm. So you failed. Mm-hmm. Like that was my head. And I had yeah. the feeling sometimes that in that people thought that of me as well, mm-hmm. even though no one really said that. Yeah. But if I would go, for example, back to Maastricht, there were people that knew me from... Uh, from a kid going to that school saying like, oh, don't you do anything with theater anymore? Oh, okay, so sad. And I thought, yeah, not really sad because I'm more happy right now mm-hmm. with the security in life and doing things every day that I like yeah. instead of having a theater job, which is has a lot of uncertainties and um, which doesn't didn't make me really happy every day that I did it. Um, yeah. But that voice was always in my mind and I was like, well... For me, I had I had something like if I do that, if I'm gonna do that race and I will finish it, I never can say to myself 
that I failed or did anything bad or 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 I'm not successful or whatever. Because mm. if you do such a thing, you can do anything you want exactly. in the world. Yeah. And then I, um, a friend of mine, Daniel, moved to New Zealand. Mm-hmm. And he said, like, you should come over and do like a trip with a camper van. You will love that. And then, so what I did, I went, I went to New Zealand, took mm-hmm. my bike with me and all my gear, went into the camper, drove around the country, combined that with training on every spot that I could find where I could do a bike ride, a swim session or whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the, of the journey, I did uh, the Ironman in New Zealand in Taupo. How long did it take you the training altogether? Let's say when you started uh, conceiving the idea, started training and then actually finishing the Ironman. I think a few months, but I was nine weeks in New Zealand and I think eight weeks I was really like deliberately doing these trainings. Yeah, but you already had, let's, let's say, a base of fitness yeah, before. Yeah, because I so. teach like 10 classes a week. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. And and to be honest, like those 10 classes a week don't really make me tired anymore. Exactly. Like it's exactly. Not the, you've reached a certain peak yeah. now that, we, that is just like, oh, let's have coffee. Yeah, <laughs> like if there are people <laughs> to me like, um, I want to get fitter. Do you think it's good that I do two body pump classes a week? And I want to lose some weight. <laughs> what What else do I need? Do I need to do? Uh, do just, double? No. Just go running. And but for me, it's like the <laughs> perception is. Di- uh, it's 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 also different because it's your work, so you do it more. But so I think my base level was already yeah. higher. Yeah. So, that, but I think in general, people usually take for th- those kind of trainings. But people that are not fit at all mm-hmm. and are starting that from scratch, they yeah. take a year sometimes. Years probably. Yeah. yeah. And maybe I would def- like in my shape. I'm not out of shape. We go for bike rides. We run sometimes, but I'm definitely no. Because when I go for a run, it's a kilometer and a half, maybe two. But then I'm yeah. like, I'm done. Yeah. So, like, so, so yeah. if I would keep doing it, like pushing myself, yeah, I know I could do it. But it just seems like a yearly, years, years challenge. Mm-hmm. That if I would start now, it would definitely be a few years <laughs> of c- c- the dedication, right? Mm-hmm. Beautiful. So that was in which year was that New Zealand? That was a couple of years ago, right? That, no, that wasn't that, very funny. That was in March 2020. <gasps> that's it was so close. Yeah, that was one of the only oh. Ironmans happening that year. Because on the snap, that is so. Wh- when did you? But that's really because one week, one week afterwards, I flew back to the Netherlands, and I remember oh, in my I, pl- remember in, I was in the plane. And <laughs> above India, I turned on the Wi-Fi uh, and I had all my friends saying, stay there, stay there, oh, we're on lockdown. Oh, so I arrived my. on a ship hall where nothing was open. Shit. And yeah, so lockdown <laughs> happens. But I'm, I, I, I completed my trip like I was planned. So I was very lucky that I wasn't stuck somewhere. That's, or, that's so true. Yeah, because the week afterwards, I think the rule in New Zealand was wherever you are, like tomorrow night at 12 o'clock you need to lock down and lockdown over there is a little bit different than lockdown in the netherlands because yes, yes. here it's quite free um, there is one case lockdown yeah <laughs> but also if you would ha- if you would try dra- travel in a camper van through uh, the country you needed to make sure that you would go to nice camping and stay there and you you need had to stay there for like two weeks yeah. and probably you couldn't go out of your camper and at all and then a uh, Small camper van, which is fun. That was, yeah, but for yeah. You, you, the uncertainty of when you can actually even leave, you know, and go home. Yeah, and you're just not. Yeah, and a friend of mine also said like, if something happens to you, you just want to be close to anything, like close to your home, close to your family. Have support so, there. Yeah, yeah. Um, definitely yeah. good. Good that you came. That you managed. Yeah, and then I came back to uh, to the Netherlands, and uh, the fun thing with those races is, if you do it. Like, especially the run, it's very heavy. Yeah, that's what I also wanted to go with you. Like, do you have any moments where, because you mentioned the mental part, right? And it's like, where you just want to quit, but you, what makes you go push forward in, in such yeah, a thing? I don't know. It's, uh, um, yeah, I think the run is the heaviest part because it's the last part of the race. Um, running has the most impact every time you run you take a step four times your body weight is landing on your leg and your yeah. um, your your bones and everything mm-hmm. so it has a lot of impact so after like um after a while just everything starts to hurt but you're also you're yeah it's it's very difficult to quit because you're like i paid quite some money to <laughs> go there yeah. quite some money to participate so i will finish no matter what yeah. um 
And and what I always <laughs> th- th- think is interesting, like it hurts so much at that moment. You're like, I will never, ever, ever do this anymore, yeah. ever. Yeah. And um, in the e- like the evening after, or even the same evening, you're like, hmm, hmm. this is the next one. I wonder if I could do it better, faster. Yeah. <laughs> so y- that's so I I did. I did one two weeks ago in Hamburg. Yeah, that was your second one or your second one. Your yes. second one. Well, second big one, but I did. And you already ones. did manage to go big milestone was achieved, which yeah, in I the community of because uh, I didn't research it, but I guess based on your reaction, the ten hour plus like under ten hour I, is some achievement or yeah. So uh, with the RMI race, they have cut off times, so mm-hmm. there is, there are times that like maximum you can you can do 17 hours to finish the race Mm -hmm. where people that goes for 17 hours they always say we get more value for our money because we are longer in the (laughs) in the race good for them good for them to think like that yeah yeah, yeah. (laughs) um and i always think the that the the shorter you um go the the, 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 like around 12 hours that was i finished in new zealand like 11 hours and 45 minutes that one in New Zealand I was following you oh yeah you sent a link that we could follow oh, nice. that was, that was <laughs> in the middle of the night because it was there by day actually because I was also watching some you know you have been into martial arts like mixed martial arts oh. watching some live events sometimes and that one I remember I was like oh let me I was doing anyway so I was checking <laughs> up on you as well oh fun <laughs> so um and now I finished it like almost two hours faster what is the time now nine hours and nine fifty four Wow. Which I think, hey, usually you're underneath the 10 hours is the, is the group of people that are a little bit more dedicated and a little bit more more training a little bit harder. Yeah. Um, but I also had friends of mine competing in Hamburg. Um, one friend of mine, Nadia, she uh, had problems with her with her um, stomach mm-hmm. and she felt sick. And that's that's always with a, with a race like that. It's so big it's mm. so long like it like a Daphne Schippers which is a very famous Dutch athlete she mm. print, sprints 200 meters um well like it's done in uh, 20 seconds or yeah. something yeah uh, but in a race like this which takes 10 hours usually like there's some so, so much, much things, things can go wrong can huh? go wrong yeah. so if you do the swim like I swallowed a lot of water mm. uh, doing the swim because there's an open water swim there are yeah. waves can be that you swallow something and there's a bacteria in the water and you yeah. just have that and then you feel sick and you need to throw up and blah, and then blah. you then uh, the mental also not to be able to finish can, and so much preparation yeah. goes and into you know you need to be able to yeah get food in but food is a, like food sounds like you're gonna have a chinese rice taf- table on the <laughs> on the course <laughs> but that's usually just water with with, with protein with, shakes or no with no, sugars, sugars and sugars. a special special sugars that give you energy mm-hmm. um and um gels and those kind of things mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um so um but if you then start to get sick you know like shit oh, i can't get the the food the energy in yeah so suddenly the body is like like n- with me everything went well so i was putting sugar in my body my body was like oh here's energy let's put it uh, into energy and let's run Mm-hmm. Uh, but if you don't get that uh, energy in, the body needs to get it from somewhere else. Mm-hmm. And you then get it more out of uh, li- like fat or maybe muscle tissue, yeah, yeah. and that's much diff- more much more difficult for the body to um, um, use that source yeah. for energy. Yeah. So you really have a hard time. Mm-hmm. And but what's the amazing thing with her? She said she had a really terrible race, and then when I checked her time, it was like eleven hours and fifteen minutes, and I thought, what? <laughs> what and you had such a and you, you were throwing up you didn't eat anything and then and then well, still finishing wow. i remember i was because in the run course sometimes you run along each other mm-hmm. like you go one lap out of the city and then you go back and then you see people passing and i saw her and i said hi like hey and she was she put her hand in the air but i knew something's wrong oh something's <laughs> up there uh, uh, well yeah yeah and so the first thing the first time doing the race was m- more like a mental achievement mm-hmm. and what that friend of New Zealand said to me like oh Arthur like I understand what you say but you don't need a race to to convince yourself that you are worth it or you're and then I said yeah I know and then what I experienced before the race even started I already had the 
changed the mind and got mentally stronger. Mm-hmm. Also because traveling on a, in a camper van for five weeks all by yourself um, is also quite a mental achievement. Mm-hmm. I would recommend that to anyone in the world to go. Yeah, try it. it's the best thing ever. Wow. Because wow. once you do that, your experience. Hey, I'm personally not taking that advice. I don't know about you, but <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> because I have family right now. No, yeah, but, but definitely, dude, that's amazing. Because I, me, and my wife are also like into travels and stuff, and 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 we want to go. But actually, alone, that terrifies me. No, it's the best thing ever. Oh my god! Because um, depends which country, though. I wouldn't go to Afghanistan <laughs> or Iraq, but like uh, things oh. like countries like New Zealand are. Yeah. For, for, I'm also uh, what I feel very comfortable with is that if I would have a flat tire, then I can put my hand up and talk to someone mm-hmm. who understands me. Yeah. And yeah. if I would go to a country where I don't speak the language, I'm not. It's I don't more. know if I feel. Yeah. But even though, like, I have a lot of people that when traveled to places where they wouldn't like had they had that issue and they still survived and mm-hmm. they were still okay but i think yeah. it would give me a little stress and a little a bit, tension a bit, a bit for sure yeah 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 our recent last, last po- pet co- podcast with you uh, before you we had a, a guest on that you met uh, at the amsterdam mm-hmm. show mm-hmm. and we had these crazy experiences with her going with the family to uganda and like we were just so crazy looking back on it now what were we doing we were so much dangerous situations and uh, a couple of months later the like a couple uh, civil war started after it was like oh my god like where were we but yeah now we're older and wiser how how do you feel about like now continuing with this you have a new dead like a new goal a bar that you want to set for yourself with this or um yeah well so that's the thing after in hamburg after 20 kilometers of running I, I was like, never again, never again, because it hurt it so much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But then I finished very well. And um, afterwards, you're like, oh, when is the next one? But this one was very special because my um, mom passed away in the beginning of this oh, year. Yeah, yeah. my she condolences. Got, yeah, yeah. It was very, not recently, but right? In March, it happened. Yeah. She got very, it was, it went very fast. In November, she was, she was also very sporty. So in November, she was still running yeah because you mentioned also in the last achievement that we you did it together she also was doing something yeah and so was proud of you as yeah. well so i um in november decided to do the race in mm-hmm. in hamburg which was going to happen in middle in the summer but it was postponed now to two weeks ago anyways and and then she she was in a running club and then i she she told everyone that I was going to participate and she said, oh, I'm going to be there. And she was looking so much forward to that and she was so yeah. proud. And I even heard from that friend that got sick the, at the race. Yeah, Her friend was supporting her, or her, her husband, and her husband heard from someone else who knew my mother. They were running together in the same group. Ah. And she told that, that guy from like, uh, yeah, I knew his mother and his mother was always talking about him and it was always That's about so Arthur and wow. she was so proud and she was also proud of my brother and, but yeah, the sport of, like, yeah, she really, she was always, if she could. Maybe to her it was also like, wow, he's a superhuman now. Like, Maybe, like he's, yeah. he, he's grown up, like he could, he could also express it in that way. Yeah, she was just very proud of her wow. children and... Um, I, she, in in, in the pictures because I've never met her personally. In the pictures I saw, she was a beautiful woman. So yeah. really, again, my condolences. And how are you doing with the? Well, f- so um, last year was was difficult because I'm third. I was thirty then. I turned thirty one afterwards. Mm-hmm. Uh, losing your mom at that age is something you never expect. I um, can't imagine. I'm still blessed. I have both my parents. Mm-hmm. So, um, but what I've learned is. Um, I, I, I read a book about um, from Edith Eger. She um, um, survived Auschwitz, mm-hmm. but the time she arrived there, she walked with her family to a big line, and then there was one of the German soldiers who said, "No, uh, no, no, no! Uh, you're gonna go in the other line." Um, and she was a small child by then, and she saw her family walking away, and they were waving away. And then a few hours later, she was in a, in a camp and. She was like, what is the what is the smoke over there? And then the camp oldest said, yeah, that's your mother. Mm. You better talk in pa- like past. Uh, past tense. Oh my God. Um, and she, and, and what's the, um, and, and then she was a dancer, like a little ballerina. And at one moment, they asked if she could dance in front of the Germans, mm-hmm. in front of those Germans who sent her family into the gas chambers. Mm-hmm. And she did that. She closed her eyes and she 
imagine that she was dancing. I think she was from Russia or some, but she was dancing in the big ballet of 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 Russia. Yeah. And um, she later became a psychologist. She wrote a book about it. And what she said is, we we don't have influence on what's happening to us. I don't. I I didn't have an influence on what was ha- what was happening to my mother. I yeah. wish I had, yeah, but exactly. no one really did. Even the doctors didn't really have an influence mm-hmm. because had she got cancer in a very rapid um, uh, uh, version. Mm-hmm. So it happened like she was only seven weeks in yeah. hospital and only the last three weeks it was like, oh, well, this is not going the way yeah. it should. Um, even the last days was only... Was it, do you know what kind of cancer? It was lymphoma, cancer lymph- in lymph- her off, yeah. back, in her nerve system. But it was it was hiding in a spot where it... it, it like it was, it was actually like a magic trick. Mm. It was saying, "Look over there! Look over there! There's something happening over there." Yeah. But in the meantime, the cancer was evolving at another place, else, yeah. but it was affecting the brain. So oh, the doctors had goodness. a focus on the brain because the, the, she has had mental problems. She was confused and everything. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Anyways, so you don't have an influence on on that, yeah. But you do have an influence on how you react on that. Exactly. Yeah. So I had a choice wow. to like go. Even like even yesterday evening, I had a I had a very nice day, I had a great evening. Um, but then I had a com- very nice conversation with a friend of mine, and I hung up and I was thinking about the week, and there was lots of things happening. I'm switching jobs, which is very nice. Um, and my brother is now in in Iraq to uh, be in the army, mm. and there were, there were, there were other things that were like little uh, ru- like felt like a bumpy week. Yes, and suddenly everything came out, and I was. I was sad and I had to cry and I was mm. sitting next to her pictures and yeah. and that's good to let it out. But yeah. it's good to do that sometimes. Yeah. But sometimes we have they so, shrunk. Mm. Well, and it's like I have so the choice was I can go like because okay, the day when my mother had the the, um, the 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 news that she had cancer, it wasn't. They said she will be there. Like seventy five percent of the people will survive. Even in two mm. week, two years, mm. they're still alive and they don't have the cancer anymore. So we were like, okay, let's go for that. Mm-hmm. And then that night, I stayed with her. I slept next to her because the day afterwards, she would go to the department where they treat the cancer, and mm-hmm. then there would only be one person. Like only my father could visit her. So I thought I will sleep so I have the most um, time with her. Mm-hmm. And um, and we made it like I so, talked to her and I said, "Do you remember that I have this race happening in uh, in, Ham, uh, in uh, 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 happening?" And then she said, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's in, in Germany." I said, "Yeah, yeah." Um, but it, this time it's special. I said to my mother, and my mother was quite confused by that time already, so it was quite difficult to have a proper conversation mm-hmm. sometimes. And then I said, uh, she said, "Yes, it's special." And I said, well, "You know why it's special?" And she said, "Yeah, it's because I'm sick." And it was the first time that she really said she was sick because mm-hmm. before I'm a positive person and um, a hospital is not the nicest place on earth to mm-hmm. be. Mm-hmm. So I played music. I'm, I sh- we went to the Van Gogh Museum. So I went, got paintings into the room. So it mm-hmm. felt a little bit more like yeah. home. Yeah. And we didn't, I didn't want to talk about, hey, mom, but you're really sick. And because I didn't know how her mind was reacting on that. So we kept everything light and good because we also thought they're going to find it. They're going to give her like antibiotics and it will be be solved. Um, But then so she said, I'm I'm, I'm sick. And then I said, well, shall we make a promise that you will we're going to fight together, that you will be with me at the, at the race, at the Hamburg, race. Yeah. and we made that promise and um yeah it it, it didn't it, work out but uh, didn't but you know what's strange um it 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 um people one friend of mine said yeah you're leaving your work you, your brother's leaving you and your mom left you and mm. it that didn't doesn't feel like she left me yeah it feels like she is ha- and i i I had to learn something new because as a magician, we always want to learn. We always know there's yes. magic, yeah. but there is always a super easy, stupid uh, um, reason. Some why solution. Some, yes. yeah, yeah. So, and then had someone passes away and then you hear all these miracles about like, oh, heaven. And I was like, well, I went to New Zealand. You're 24 hours in the air. There's mm. no heaven over there. <laughs> I didn't see anything. Yeah, so yeah. it's really, you, you start to overanalyze it. Yes. And then I, I like try to learn, like okay, Arthur, if you feel 
nice. And if you feel that she is present or you feel her energy, just let it be there. Let it be there. It's also when it's what, beautiful. Yeah, what we do sometimes with the magic, like you can go and go like, okay, I want to know how it's happening. Mm -hmm. But if you Would just you? go like, okay, just l let let go. go. Yeah. Then you have the the best feeling and and then so with that raise I had two choices like I could say I'm not gonna do it because my mom passed away I know that raise I will be crying the whole raise mm -hmm. and it will be one disaster so I'm never gonna do this yeah. anymore yeah. finished yeah or I'm gonna do it but this time I'm not gonna do it in eleven hours whatever but I'm gonna do it super fast and I'm gonna honor her and uh, wow. It was very uh, special. I think the most wow. important part was the start and the finish. Because mm -hmm. at the start, we were due to COVID. It wasn't a lot for audience to come close. Mm -hmm. So you stand there with all these people in a with a cap and glasses and, and, and a wetsuit on. Mm -hmm. And you're all alone. And then suddenly, well, I had the feeling I wasn't alone. Because I had the feeling I had contact with her and uh, mm. said, Mom, here we go. And... <laughs> I, was, I was crying between all these like oh. strong men because I was in the <laughs> in the fastest swim group. Yeah, <laughs> and I was and you were bawling your eyes out. Yes, <laughs> and uh, and then it gave me energy. And uh, sometimes it, all, it felt so light the bike. I was like, mm, I think I cheated because someone was pushing me in the yeah. back. <laughs> and then what was really nice is a friend of mine, Nadia. She was wow. also there, and she had a T-shirt. She made a T-shirt with a picture of my mom and me at the start of a triathlon many years ago was a was one of my first ones and uh, she gave me the t-shirt just before the finish line and i took put the t-shirt over my over my uh, my tri suit and uh, on that way we finished uh, we finished together and uh, wow. beautiful man yeah yeah and i have to also say that you know because i told you before we started uh, recording i've been into searching about some answers about my life and going into psychology understanding my own personality or people around me and, and also try to understand differences between people and how to stay strong in because you know my my grandmother my mother's mother recently was diagnosed with cancer and she's one of those people who unfortunately doesn't have a will to live right now she's just she's uh, her husband passed away years ago and she's more like just you know she had diabetes and then this is wrong and that she's just like so that's uh, another part, but it's like, if you're strong, like you, you have something, she, your mother raised you really well, or I don't know, you haven't talked about your father, but you have certainly had positive influences by mm -hmm. my, my opinion, since you've been able to take the tragedy and make it manageable. And cause you know, so a lot of times it happens that people turn tragedy into hell because they either fight between when the when the mother passed away you can fight with brothers and sisters oh, and you can no. have this kind of and a lot of times when you're put together well in this yeah. world where you live when you have been raised well and you can deal with certain hard stuff and you're pushing yourself mentally and physically mm -hmm. that you can then take this horrible tragedy and just have it be and not turn it into a living hell you know for yourself yeah. and your family so but for me and and that's what i have what i just told about that woman that aided Iger, the Auschwitz woman, mm -hmm. um, you have a choice in that. Mm -hmm. You can choose to go to that path. Yeah. But yeah. why, if you have that choice, why don't you go to the other path? So I have the feeling... I think it's easier for people at times to stay suffering and, and... Yeah, sometimes you know. it's, it's comfortable to go in that suffering Yeah, position. because it's the evil you know. And then if you're going outside, you don't know what's there. It might be more horrible, yeah. you know, than what already is here. So. But what I... Uh, what I think is most of the times what happens, I, well, I have to say I come from a very warm and loving family. My mm -hmm, parents beautiful. were always very loving and warming. They were always very supportive with me, even though my father wasn't that enthusiastic that I was going to do a theater, sh a theater school, but they they let me do it. And yeah. Yeah. Uh, they're, he, he, he and my mother, but they were always proud of anything. And also my, my father, like, we are... He, he's the per kind of person he says like whatever happens i will always be there and i will come and get you and if there the phone goes in the middle of the night and mm. you had an accident or whatever or you, you you're in the jail or yeah whatever yeah. It, so that it has a great base uh, to begin with yeah. and yeah. i some people always also said that to me like things like this um make um people come closer you actually need to because my you mother to, was otherwise you break apart yeah so. and my mother was the uh, let's say the glue that kept all the all the four of us together mm -hmm. and now that's well that goes away physically mm -hmm. 
But as my brother always says it very nice, he has the feeling that my mother's bringing us all together, like she's doing yeah. that from some yeah. place. But even though it's not from somewhere, you feel yeah. that you are more connected. And my father and my brother were there with me at the race as well. And it feel like it felt like we were doing it with with, uh, with all of us. Yeah. Yeah. And I think for even for them it was a nice um for me it was a uh, it, it 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 had also the training lots of people think oh five hours on a bike so boring mm. no after one and a half or two hours your mind is empty mm. and you're enjoying not having instagram facebook mm. messages of whatsapp people calling you uh, mm -hmm. you know all this is crazy life yeah, yeah yeah it's just you're emptying your mind you're listening to yourself and you you only that because you that's the only it's like meditating actually yeah but it's hard like meditation i've been trying with my wife years ago when we started going to a bit more um what they call in the modern western uh, let's say psychological word they call it mindfulness right yeah. and it's more like basically accepting the knowledge from the eastern world and trying to <laughs> like, you know make it into a frame of the western uh, yeah. philosophy and psychology and but it is hard to do when people try when i tried it and and when i still try i'm getting better and i'm, I'm, I'm at a minute or a minute and a half and actually i can blank myself out mm -hmm. before any thoughts come but then it's becoming like it's like anything else, practice, practice. But if you can get yourself into this kind of physical situation, <laughs> I can imagine you don't need to practice blanking out. After an hour and a half, like you said, it just yeah. out and you're just there in the moment. And I think with things like, like this, with my grief in the morning, yeah. I, for them, that, that event for my brother, my father. Was also helping, also like really a closure a bit also or... Oh, or yeah. not closure, but just like, like you said, letting go of the... It, 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 what also, what was nice is that it felt like you're taking the negative thing and turning it into something beautiful and positive. Exactly. Yeah. And what's very nice of um, Floris Lewenberg, which is a, um, a, a um, documentary maker and won also several uh, prizes, like a world press uh, photo and uh, uh, like lots of things and mm -hmm. works for Netflix sometimes too. Yeah. Um, and he followed me. He was also there with the magic show last week and he followed me on my preparations and mm -hmm. also during the race. And he is making a little, uh, little, yeah, let's say a little movie about well, me. Well, put in a, your plug here because uh, this yeah. will this will take a while before this podcast comes oh, out. Because yeah. I'm editing, like I said, I'll be, I'm not as good as so. We're now we're making a stock of podcasts for yeah. me to put nice. out. So let's like continue, keep in touch. When if maybe we can just put a link also, yeah. and when it's done and people can check it out. Basically, with that, we we maybe need. To, well, that's also making a podcast you're like oh that's fun but it takes a lot of work and yeah. making a movie like you suddenly realized like oh if Ooh. we when we want to yeah. film me training you need a car you need a cameraman you need a driver you need lead. a team yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. um i actually um discovered that the budget that i had in plan is not very um it doesn't reach the goal anymore yeah so maybe we're gonna do a crowdfund Mm -hmm. um, so I'm Beautiful. not sure if, if the if the if look the video if, if this is out yet, we're gonna definitely put the crowdfunding there. Yeah, uh, and 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 I might even switch up some podcast uh, the order if I feel that this is important. Mm -hmm. Also for that it matches the podcast, we can just we'll edit it sooner and yeah. get it out before because I said episode six, right? It might oh, be yeah. another number, so keep an eye. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, <laughs> but no worries, it's it's all jazz. So we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna jazz it up. Because the thing with the what I had in mind with the with the movie is that mm -hmm. and the things that happened. They are, for me, it's very uh, beautiful to, to go through it like this. But as you said, there are a lot of people who, who take the different path and they maybe uh, they don't choose to go into the negative hole. Mm -hmm. But um, showing them that, that for me, it was a little bit like losing my mom, staying, staying strong with that, mm -hmm. taking that into something positive and then finishing a race like that, like super that, fast. Yes. If I can do that, then... And like you, sh you should like no one should dare to say that yeah, they can't yeah. do some small things that are exactly. less heavy. Less heavy, but yeah, it's like you, you, like I told my kids now recently. It's such a stereotypical way, and and, and I have to you know credit Dr. Jordan Peterson for this because he's famous about this. Yeah, clean your clean your room, you know, get your room ready because <laughs> everybody's and it's like a silly metaphor, but it's like. Your room is like this space that everybody has that you can put in order, plan stuff about it, make it so it's manageable, you know, and less scary. And then you go out and to the outside and start taking care of, you know, managing other things outside that space. But there's your practice. There's your, you know, and, and it's such a, and I'm also sometimes with my room, you saw my room, I have to get things in ready. I'm also mm -hmm. messy. So we're working on it. People just have to not stop 
stop at certain points and oh this is now it if i'm now i'm depressed and now I'm, or whatever is happening and that this is now over because mm-hmm. if you stop moving or stop doing you can just fall in a hole and so beautiful beautiful that you share that um anybody who's listening hopefully can get some inspiration from yeah and and also because a lot of people said to me and i th- i sometimes fu- like struggle a little bit with with that is that they always said like First of all, there were two things that happened, what people said after my mom passed away. They go like, oh, how awful, so awful, oh, so awful, mm. oh, again, the man. so awful. And I was like, yeah, quite awful. Mm-hmm. But because she said it 10 times. It's more awful <laughs> it's now, more for awful me. and they now. make it more awful. <laughs> so thank you for mentioning that again. Yeah. Um, and the second thing is that people say like, I can't imagine. And then I'm always like, well, I'm not asking you to imagine how it is. Mm. I'm just asking you to Open, listen, listen, to listen. To me, yeah, yeah. Um, but also, I couldn't imagine one year if I would have imagined one year ago, pff, I wouldn't able to to walk on the street maybe for days. Like, it's, yeah, yeah. Um, but but don't imagine. Maybe think of it like as in my mother always thought she wanted to go to a natural cemetery, so she in the, she is in a in a beautiful forest mm. where you wouldn't say it's a cemetery, but it's and I planted beautiful forest flowers beautiful. over there, and she said to me by coincidence like a year ago I had, and she wasn't she wasn't sick at all until those seven weeks mm-hmm. when she was in hospital so there was never a sign that this was going to happen mm-hmm. um, but she said whenever something is happening with me i want you to to lead the service and to uh, to talk and uh, wow so but at those things that's maybe nice to talk about that yeah, but yeah. but but the size of that don't focus too much on exactly, that exactly yeah. when it happens it happens it can consume you otherwise yeah, yeah. And when, when someone passes away, you're like if your mother or your father passes away, well, th- the thing is, you, th- you can't change it. You need to go through it mm. and then just trust that everything will be all right. Exactly, exactly. I mean, beautiful, beautiful message. I mean, I, I, we don't want to make this podcast too long. And I think it was a really nice, you know, transition, mm. to, a really nice segue for a message to anybody listening, stay positive, keep working hard. You want me every day, like when, <laughs> when I, say, I just, some of the reasons why I don't go on your pages are because I know that you're gonna make me feel guilty about my laziness. And I'm like, mm, I'd rather not <laughs> watch what Arthur is doing today. <laughs> it's like some people say for The Rock, you know, like, oh, oh, like you, it's gonna make, even if you're so pumped and you're doing all this stuff, he's working harder. Uh, <laughs> and then you don't wanna look at that. But in, in general, you're an inspiration. I always try to feel, you know, like when I see, things that I seem that are impossible or that I'm inspired by it would be better sooner inspired than quitting, you know, because mm-hmm. I've seen so much cases where people see things that could be inspirational to them. And it's so overwhelming. It's like, oh, I have this. I could never do that. They just quit, you know, yeah. because I, I watched a documentary about a, a, a professional triathletes. Mm-hmm. And there was one crazy guy who drives himself to the extreme limits. And he said once, that we are never at our limit. We never are at our limit. Is that David our Goggins? Li- no. That crazy character. His name, well, I forgot <laughs> his name. Uh, uh, well, he said, we are never at our limit. Our limit is just created in our minds, but it does. It just doesn't exist. But yeah, we create yeah. that limit in our minds. We can do anything. That's true. You just shouldn't like start from where I am right now and start running directly to apply for no. the race there. Yeah, you probably would go, we will, you will hurt yourself. Mm-hmm. But stay smart in your pushing the limits, I would say. Because like, uh, mm-hmm. like, I think artists in general are also like, um, or performers or like artistic expression is always on the border there of like chaos and, and order. Like, and then we, we're trying to step into the chaos a little bit and make some order out of it. And that way we can expand where that order is and beautiful arthur thank you so much for being like guest. but Thanks what we're going to me. do oh. is we're going to step in we're going to make a shoulder break and we're going to make a special magic patreon episode mm-hmm. where we're going to talk a little bit more about what we do maybe some things we will we'll learn from each other and maybe the guests uh, who are or not the guests that people who are watching and listening can also include so watch out for the patreon episode thank you for watching this and like i always say i'm not used to this but like subscribe whatever you want to do share it everywhere and uh, let's let's get these conversations out there beautiful arthur thank you so much and we'll see you next time